I miss all the families, uh, the sniffles, red eyes, and the Kleenex, but so be it um, next year. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, newborn screening for MLD and a little bit of CTX uh, on the next slide. Uh, I, I won't say much about next generation sequencing. I think you got a sense from this morning that, you know, first tier newborn screening by newborn by next generation DNA sequencing is not happening anytime soon. Uh, it's just a mess. Uh, the genomics people might be pushing it, but you know the people in the trenches doing the newborn screening know that it, there's too many problems, and, and the problems are so severe that we don't really know when it would ever, if and when it would ever become a first tier method. So for the time being, it'll be at most a, a second tier method uh, for DNA. Next slide. Uh, can we screen for MLD? And the answer is definitively yes. Um, so six years ago, working with Dean and Terrence Sir, who run the MLD Foundation, um, they got me 17 newborn dry blood spots from California from patients that went on to be diagnosed with MLD. So California stores, you know, residual blood spots for many years in the freezer. Uh, so we use these to sort of set, to look at what the biomarker levels are in confirmed newborn uh, in MLD patients. And the, the, importantly, these are newborn blood spots, right? So this is what we're gonna see in newborn screening. So on the next slide, uh, we'll skip this slide. Uh, next slide, next slide. Yes, yeah, so, so for lots of reasons, this is all published uh, in genetics and medicine. We, we look at the sulfatide level in blood spots as the first tier screen. So sulfatide accumulates in MLD patients, they're missing the enzyme that degrades sulfatide in the lysosome. And you can see the um, data with the 17 newborns. Uh, we set the cutoff, so we capture all of them. So we shouldn't miss any. There were two that were kind of low sulfatide. Uh, these are the older blood spots. So we think this cutoff can probably be raised a little bit. Uh, this, this is our conservative cutoff, so we don't miss any. And you can see 2,000 random newborns uh, that there's some overlap. Uh, the upper range of the normals crosses the cutoff. So we're gonna have some false positives, but hang on, you'll see. Uh, next slide. So we did a pilot study, uh, but th this is with de-identified blood spots because in Washington state, we have no way to get consent across the state. We'll come back to that. We did 27,000. We measured the sulfatide first here in the blood spot. 195, which is a large number had sulfatide above this cutoff. Uh, it would be less than 10 if we exclude those two California lowballs. Um, uh, I think these are older blood spots and, and this cutoff is too conservative, but it doesn't matter. So then we do the ARSA, the enzymatic activity, the relevant enzyme. Uh, so in this case, instead of doing the enzyme first, like GAL-C and then the cyclosine, we do the biomarker first than the enzyme. There's lots of reasons for that. One, one of which is the enzyme is not very stable in blood spots. So it's, it's good for a second tier test, but not a first tier. But this is part of newborn screening. We would never call 195 families and tell them you know, to drive in and get retested. I mean, that, that would be chaos. So we, we, we do the ARSA enzymatic activity in the same punch. We had two that were, uh, all but two had greater than 30% of normal ARSA could not possibly have MLD. We had one at 8% and one at 0%. So then we uh, sequenced these two guys here, this eight and zero. The 8% had only pseudo-deficiency mutations, actually three of them, it's probably not MLD. And the 0% had a genotype uh, reported to be MLD causing in the literature. Okay, so this exact genotype was MLD causing. So we're, we're quite certain this patient will develop MLD, but we don't know who it is. So um, the, the false positive rate is zero out of, 27,000, if we set the cutoff for the enzyme at let's say 8% or, or below. If we set it at 10, 20%, then we have at most one false positive out of 27,000. So this is remarkable, right? This, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the best performing newborn screen ever developed. Uh, uh, essentially zero false positives. Next slide. Um, let's skip that. Yeah, the ARSA enzyme is not very stable in blood spots. You lose about half of it at 37 degrees. I think in Florida, warm states, Texas, this would be a problem. So, you know, 
this is a problem in general, but if, if the enzyme is close to zero on top of elevated sulfatides, this is not a stability problem, right? This is a real MLD case. So we're not too worried about this instability of the enzyme, but we don't recommend it as a first tier test. Next slide. Uh, a pilot study using this technology has started in Germany. Um, uh, and there's talk about one starting in Italy. I, I think the one in Germany might be identif perspective identified, just got started. They've reproduced sort of our cutoffs and everything. You can see some data that MLD in their cohort sulfatides well above the uh, normal pack. This suggests to me that the two low balls we had is an anomaly for us. They don't have this problem. Anyways, the screen works. Next slide. Uh, next slide, let's keep going. Next slide. This is a little bit of a longer talk. Next slide. I want to move to CTX. Okay, so CTX is a bile acid disorder. You're missing an enzyme in the biosynthesis of bile, and it can be well treated simply by giving a, a bile salt supplementation. It's pretty much a home run tr treatment. Um, we don't know the frequency of this disease, one in about 40 to 200,000. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Yeah, we measure uh, this tetraglucuronidide. This biomarker was discovered by uh, Fred Vaz and his colleagues at the Amsterdam Medical Center. Um, so, so what happened is we started the MLD pilot and we said, why don't we just turn on the uh, mass spec channel for this biomarker and do CTX at the same time. These guys wanted to do a pilot study. So we said, why don't we just do it for free? In fact, it'll be done in three months. So we just did it by adding another channel to, in our MLD pilot. Okay, next slide. Um, next slide. Yeah, that's amazing. We did 50,000. Uh, we had only one patient with the biomarker consistent with the disease and the genotype proved uh, that it was CTX. I said prove, I mean, this is a patient that has two severe mutations in the gene and we know we'll have CTX. So the false positive rate is zero per 50,000. Again, amazing. Published in genetics and medicine. I mean, we've heard about the false positives with Krabby disease, but the problem has been largely solved uh, by cyclosine. So, you know, we, we started off a little rough and then we made it better. Uh, this is going to start off working like a charm. Next slide. So how are we going to get these guys on the recommended uniform screening panel? You know, we need, we need to have a prospective pilot study. This is a nasty requirement. It's really hard to do this. So enter Melissa Wasserstein, um, who has this brilliant idea to work with seven large hospitals in the New York City area where we can get, you know, 200,000 patients over five years, right? Can't do that in Washington State. I'd have to go to 1,000 hospitals. Um, and let's keep going. Uh, next slide. I'll be done in a minute. So Screen Plus was invented by Melissa. Uh, it's been renewed, and it's in its second phase where we've now gone to 14 new conditions. Uh, so uh, the, all of the low, all of the screen positive first tier tests will be reflexed to DNA in New York um, and also to the Mayo Clinic and to my lab for biochemical tests. So we're gonna do DNA and biomarker at the same time. For some of the diseases, we only have DNA. We don't have good second tier biomarkers, but for most of the diseases, we have second tier biochemical biomarkers. We're going to be doing it all kind of as a research study. And, and um, we're going to be doing this survey of, patient, of families, how they feel. This is Aaron Goldenberg at uh, Case Western. It's a really nice uh, package. It is a nice website. Next slide. Um, Screen Plus website. Okay, next slide. Here are the diseases. You'll see MLD and CTX on here. Uh, 14, 15 conditions. Um, uh, I don't know what the bottom one is. 15. I think it's 14 conditions. So this is a a multiplex LC mass spec assay that we developed and set up uh, with, with Joe and his lab. It's being run in New York. All the sequencing is being done in New York and all the biochemistry is done at Mayo Clinic and my lab. Um, uh, and then Melissa, you know, and her team of clinicians will talk to the families. Uh, to get on this list, there has to be a treatment available or a clinical trial far along, right? So we're only screening for things for which we, we offer some sort of clinical trial or treatment other, rather than just a dead end, right? We don't want to do that to families. So this is, an, this is a plastic list. We can expand it or contract it. 
Uh, you know, we might add MPS3A pretty soon because there's a lot of gene therapy trials, um, et cetera. Okay, next slide. I think we're almost done. Yeah, this is, you know, we LC mass spec. I think it's the method of the future. It's going to replace flow injection to a large extent. And uh, it's just as easy to do. It's in some ways better. It's, it's easier on the machine. It's coming soon. And we basically open up all these channels for all these enzyme products and biomarkers inside of two minutes. Per, you can see this goes out to 2.1 minutes. It's very fast. Next slide. Um, next slide. I think we're done here. Yeah, so my team, um, I want to thank Dean and Terrence or the MLD Foundation. I want to thank for Christine Wagner, Cure GM1, a mother of a GM1 patient and helped me get samples. All of these people, um, many of you have heard today, um, funding is from NIH and biotech. And um, thanks for listening. Be happy to take questions. A lot of people involved here.